Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're talking process, specifically highlighting how you can build a three tiered watch list approach to track the chart setups that you're finding in the markets, move those into a narrower stocking list to keep an eye on those setups as they develop, and then finally move things into an active buying list to track the opportunities that you actually want to take advantage of. This is something out of my own personal toolkit, so we're going to put it on display. We're going to have some fun while we do it. Plus, of course, we're highlighting the holiday special just a couple more days to take advantage of our special two free months of stock charts offer. So lots to cover on today's show. Of course, you know what it is. It's all new. It's all here. It's stock charts in focus. Friends, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me here on Stock Charts in Focus. Of course, our product focus show on the channel where we dig into the site, dive into the features, show you around the tools, and ultimately help you get more value out of stock charts. That is our mission here on this show every Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, also up on our YouTube channel after that and the live channel at StockChartsTV.com. Lots of ways to watch. If you're new to the show, my name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com. So good to be with you, especially on an episode like this one. As we do a lot on this show, we're actually going to reach into my own personal process, going to reach into my own personal toolkit, show you some of the things that I use in my approach to the markets using stock charts. So this is going to be a fun one as we take a look at your chart discovery and tracking routines using chart lists. As we mentioned, we're going to look at how to create a three tiered watch list system. So a first one that I like to call my dump bucket for stocks, just kind of a, a place to dump interesting chart setups that you want to keep an eye on. Maybe you want to add some annotations and watch things evolve over time. From there, we've got sort of our next tier down, which is the more active, the more narrow stocking list, what I call my stocking list which is things that you're really keeping a close eye on, things that you want to actually move on. You're maybe waiting for the chart to set up to, uh, to confirm a couple of different, uh, different things that you're seeing, but those are the ones that you're thinking you're really going to want to take advantage of. And then from there, we have our third tier. That's the buying list. So things get moved from one list to another. When it comes time to buy, you've got those opportunities tracked on your buying list, your third watch list in the system. So we're going to take a look at how I do that, how I can actually move charts around, how the annotations kind of follow in the sharp charts world. And of course, the same concepts that we're talking about today also apply over an ACP. So we are going to stay focused on the sharp charts world today. But just know if you're an ACP user, the same concepts apply. Everything that we're talking about, having these kind of three tiers to your watch list system, it all applies over there as well. So we're going to have a lot of fun on today's show. Before we do that, though, I do want to remind everyone our holiday special is going on right now only for another week. It really is getting to the last couple of days of our holiday special. But as I'm sure you've heard, if you've been following this show, you've definitely heard it. But banners up and around the site, our newsletter, we've been talking about it a lot. One of our biggest sales of the year, really our, uh, our biggest one of the year other than Cyber Monday. We're offering two free months of stock charts when you extend your membership right now or when you sign up for a new account. So whether you're a current member or whether you're uh, currently using our free trials, but you've been thinking about upgrading to those premium features, the uh, the stock charts membership and all the uh, the different things you unlock when you become a member, this is the time to sign up. So if you've seen those big red banners across the uh, across the site, that is going to lead you right over to the special page. We've got more details for you. But if you're watching this right now, go to stockcharts.com slash special. That's going to take you right to that informational page that's got all the details for you. So on that page, we talk a lot about the, uh, the different membership levels, the different deals that we're offering. There are two different deals. If you sign up or extend for 12 months, you're going to get two additional free months. Or if you sign up or renew for six months, you're going to get one free month. So two different deals. It applies to all three of our membership levels. So up at stockcharts.com slash special, you've got all the info that you need to know uh, about what's going on right now with that special. Like I said, 
just the uh, the last couple of days here that ends at the end of December. So now it's time to catch it before the savings disappear. Definitely make sure you do that again. You know, if you're a current member, this is the time to extend your membership out in the future. Save some money on the account that you uh, know and love here at Stock Charts. Uh, but if you are a free user and you've been thinking about signing up, this really is the time to do it. You can actually sign up for that free trial. That's going to give you sort of a taste of those membership features. And then before the end of December, you can go take advantage of that special. That's going to get you that special pricing as well. And you'll still have that free month. So actually, if you're a free user right now, if you're just using our free tools, you can almost get three free months of stock charts by signing up for the trial and then taking advantage of the special. So lots of different ways to save, but definitely check out stockcharts.com special to take advantage of that before it ends at the end of December. So with that little bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's jump over to the site. We're going to have some fun today taking a look at the three tiered watch list system that we're going to cover something straight out of my toolkit near and dear to my heart. So let's jump over there to my account and we'll actually show you how this works in practice. All right, my friends. So we are here on the members dashboard. Of course, the first page that you see when you log into stock charts, I like to call this the heart and soul of stock charts because there is so much here. Of course, you've got access to all of the different member tools over on the left, but you've also got your customizable market dashboard that you can build with the market overview in the middle and the sector summary, market movers, things like the ticker cloud. All of these, of course, customizable as well by opening this little more menu and you can actually set that. You've got settings up here as well to turn on additional views. There is so much you can do with the dashboard, but we're starting here because on today's show, we're looking at chart lists. Now I said we're building a three tiered watch list system. The way that we're going to do that is through chart lists. If you're not familiar with what a chart list is, chart list is where you save charts makes sense from the name. Uh, but in stock charts speak, the place that you save those charts, when you you've got something you want to bookmark, when you got chart settings and you got a list of symbols and all that stuff that gets saved into a chart list. Now the dashboard is one of the best places to see all of your chart lists. You also have this handy little chart list button here in the top right corner of the dashboard. So we'll give that a click and that scrolls me right down to all of my chart lists. So we covered this a little bit in the opening. I know I kind of mentioned how this flow works, but what we're looking at are actually the three lists at the very top of my account. Now I've put these at the very top of my account for a very specific reason, which I will highlight in just a second. I've actually done that by starring it. So when you create lists, the list in your account will actually be ordered alphabetically, but you can also use characters. You can use numbers. You can use a lettering system. You can really start to kind of build your own system for, uh, for actually customizing the order of your chart list. That's something that we've covered on the show in the past, but to briefly touch on this, you can see that the, uh, the things with a star will go up to the top. If it has one star, that's going to go at the top. And then I've also got a list ordered with two stars and three stars. Um, and then other characters as well. So I actually have this uh, relatively complex, but not that hard to, uh, to understand uh, sort of character system to order my chart list in a very specific way. I want them ordered in a very specific way. I want my market evaluation lists kind of right up at the top. I want my different portfolios. Uh, that's kind of this, uh, this next block here. Um, and then I've got uh, some of my other watch lists. I've got different uh, chart lists for uh, scan results and, and things like that. And then uh, what I call my theme traits list. So you can see that I actually have this character system, which allows me to kind of custom order the, uh, the chart lists in my account. Now I also have things that are numbered as well. Uh, so I have tons and tons of chart lists in my account, um, but you can use really kind of anything you can dream up to create this kind of, uh, kind of system. The key though, which we'll highlight in just a second, the key is that because I have a uh, tier one watch list here with just one star, um, and then, uh, you know, one, two, three down the, uh, down the list, this tier one watch list is always going to be the first one that shows up in the menu. Now, briefly to jump away from our chart list, what, do, what do I mean by uh, shows up in the menu? If I go back up to the top and I jump over to the sharp charts workbench, I've pulled up a, a random ticker symbol. In this case, we're looking at Apple pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, but up here in the save interface on the sharp charts workbench, you can see that the first list is selected in this list, and that is my tier one watch list. So the nice thing about having your tier one watch list be the first list in your uh, your account, the first chart list in the uh, in the group, 
is that that's all basically going to be preloaded here in this menu when you want to save th something from the sharp charts workbench so as you're going through your charts if you're using the sharp charts workbench a lot and let's say you stumbled across apple and you said this is a beautiful chart i want to save this into my watch list and keep an eye on it for later well it's re really easy to do that because all i have to do i don't actually have to change this menu if my tier one watch list is the place where i'm sort of dumping stocks to begin with again it's the first stop for any stock that i want to keep an eye on uh, again i you know i like to call it kind of that dump bucket it's really easy to save this because all i have to do is hit save as i've already got that list selected there and i can just hit add new to save that right into my uh, my sort of first watch list in my account so that is a, a little bit of a long-winded explanation for why I actually keep these at the very top of my account, but it's a nice little stock charts productivity hack, little efficiency hack there. Uh, you can keep that uh, that tier one watch list as the first one in your account, makes it easy to save symbols into it from Sharp Charts Workbench. So we'll jump back over to the dashboard now. We'll go back to our chart lists and let's hit the meat of today's show. What we're talking about are these three lists. So I've got some, uh, some little notes actually in here um, and I've kind of mucked with this so that we're actually going to do it like in real time. We are going to run through how to move things through these different watch lists and, uh, and show you exactly how to take advantage of this kind of three tiered approach. Now to describe these three lists, what I mean by three tiers, you can see we've got our three names, our tier one watch list, our tier two is our stocking list, and our tier three is our buying list. So to run through each of those, our, our watch list, the tier one watch list is just a broad watch list of interesting chart setups. That's what it is to me. Again, I call it that dump bucket. It's a place where I'm just saying, hey, that's an interesting chart. That's one I wanna keep an eye on. I wonder how that's gonna set up in the next couple of trading sessions or next couple of weeks or even next couple of months. My tier one watch list is just kind of the first place that I dump different stocks. So it's, uh, it's nice and easy to have that one as the first one in the, uh, in the account. As we showed, it's nice and easy to save those uh, new symbols into that list. And it really is just kind of that broad watch list to keep an eye on things. Now, the next list down from that is, as you can see here, a narrower list of what I would call actionable trade candidates, things that are really worth stocking. Um, actually, the uh, the term stocking, since I've gotten this question before, if you've read my book, Tensile Trading, uh, stocking comes out of that. It's one of the uh, one of the stages, one of the 10 stages of stock market mastery, as we call it, the, uh, the stocking phase. Um, so anyways, the stocking list is things that I'm really keeping a close eye on. I'm saying, hey, this is really setting up nicely. I'm liking what I'm seeing on this chart. I like the way the indicators are moving. I like the price action here. This is something I want to keep a close eye on. It's not just a general, you know, I'll keep a sort of a general eye on that, but it's something that I think is actually going to be very actionable, a trade candidate that's really setting up nicely. So that's what I call my stocking list, things that I'm really kind of stocking as a potential trade. Now, when everything lines up perfectly and I see the chart set up exactly the way I want it, maybe we're hitting a breakout level or we're, uh, we're seeing you know, a nice earnings pop and continuing higher, whatever the, uh, the, the, the criteria is, um, when I'm actually going to buy something, I wanna move that onto a separate list. So that's the third tier in this three tiered approach is the buying list. So you can see here, this is a slim list of new trade candidates that are really ready for a new position. I'm saying this chart is, uh, is, is here to go. This, uh, this symbol is ready to roll. I'm ready to actually take a new position in this. And so I'll actually move that chart onto the buying list and that's where I can track it kind of separately. Uh, it's also kind of a nice routine to have, you know, having this, uh, this separate buying list as you're going through, let's say your weekly process. If you do a lot of chart review on the weekends, for instance, it's always nice to, uh, to be able to move things onto that buying list. And then you have that as a standalone list, a very, very actionable list for the trading week that's coming up, for instance. Uh, so that is our sort of three tiered approach. We've got our watch list, which is just the dump bucket where we're putting things and, uh, and coming back to it later. We're keeping an eye on things. Uh, and that list can be very, very big. Uh, in this case, we actually have 70 charts on it. I've set this up um, with all of the stocks in the S&P 1500 that made a, a new all time high this week. Um, so we're actually going to work through this in just a minute. But we've got our watch list. That's the, the big one. Uh, as things set up nicely, we move things from that watch list into the stocking list. We keep our annotations going. We keep our notes on all those charts. And that's where we're really watching for a new trade target that we might want to take on. And then once we decide now is the time to go, we can actually move things from tier two down to tier three from the stocking list into the buying list. 
uh, and we can uh, contract those and have those uh, those new trade targets really kind of organized in one place. So that's the concept. Hopefully that's come through. What we're going to do now is actually jump into that watch list and we're going to run through this. I'm going to show you exactly how you can use some of the chart list views, how, how you can use some of the, uh, the different features of these chart lists to actually move things through these three different tiers. So in my case, I like to do a lot of work from chart book view. Uh, a lot of people like 10 per page, which puts 10 charts on the page and you can sort of click through those different groups of 10. I like to look at one chart at a time, which is chart book. So you've got just one chart on the screen and you can go next and previous. You can sort of flip through it as if it's in a book. The other way that a lot of people like to, uh, to breeze through a chart list is in candle glance form. So there you've got these little mini charts and you can actually uh, delete things right from, uh, from the view. So whatever your preference, you can view your uh, your tier one watch list once you create it. You can view that in a couple of different ways. We'll actually jump over to Candle Glance very quickly because I do want to show you how easy it is uh, to delete things. This is Candle Glance. So if you wanted to take that tier one watch list, you just wanted to kind of see all the charts at a uh, at a high level and then maybe start to uh, to move some things on your stocking list. This is a nice way to do it. Also a nice way to review scans. Uh, so this is this is sort of my second uh, second approach, if you will. But the one that I personally love to use is actually chart book. So as you can see here, chart book puts just one chart on the screen at once. It does allow you to select which chart you're viewing. So if you wanted to jump to a specific chart, you have that ability. But from here, you can just go one, uh, you know, click through them uh, one at a time. And it's a, it's a nice, easy way to see all of the different charts in a list. Again, just kind of clicking through these charts. Now, the beautiful thing about this too is that you can also annotate charts directly from Chartbook. You can do that in 10 per page as well. Uh, but for instance, if we were looking at ABC here, maybe we wanted to draw a, uh, a horizontal line here across. It's uh, really kind of breaking out there, a nice breakout there. We've also got some nice outperformance here, outperforming the total market. Things that I personally like to see in my approach to the market. So I can add those annotations here in Chartbook though and close this down. And now those are automatically saved on the chart. So chart book allows me, I personally think, to, uh, to just kind of focus on one thing at a time, add my annotations, add notes as well. So I can actually uh, click here to add a comment on that chart. So I might want to uh, you know, make some notes, jot things down as I'm reviewing these charts. But I can start to flip through from here. Now, we can, uh, we can keep going through this whole chart. Um, so let's say though, we've, uh, we've gone through our whole tier one watch list and we wanted to start moving some things over to our stocking list. If we keep clicking through here, we've got some beautiful charts in this case. Uh, one actually, as I was going through this earlier that was set up really, really nicely was ADP. Really liked what I was seeing out of ADP. So we've got a little bit of a breakout here. We've got nice outperformance. Those are the types of things that I wanna look for. So I might wanna take a couple of these charts. We looked at ABC before, we've also got ADP now. I might wanna take a couple of those and actually move them onto my stocking list. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. One, if you went through the entire tier one watch list, you could actually kind of delete everything and then move it all over. I personally though, I actually like to work out a chart book as I mentioned, and then I like to open the edit tab, the, uh, the edit view for this chart list in another window. And this allows me to check things off and then use some of the uh, the moving features, which we'll, we'll show here in just a second, uh, to actually move things over to those other lists. So in this case, as I'm working through Chartbook, let's say I came up here on ADP, and again, I'm gonna add some annotations. I've got my uh, my trend line there on the, uh, the relative strength line. We've got our beautiful breakout right there. Also had a nice breakout back here. Uh, I'll draw that down a little bit. A uh, little bit of consolidation here before. Uh, so some nice things that I'm seeing on this chart of ADP. I'm gonna add those annotations, save that. So let's say I'm going through, I add my annotations and I say, hey, ADP is really setting up nicely. I like what I'm seeing out of ADP. Also liked what I was seeing out of ABC. As I'm going through, because I've got this edit view opened in another tab, I can just sort of follow along here and I can actually check these off as I go. So this is kind of how I will work through a, uh, a chart list. I'll actually go in chart book and, uh, and sort of keep track on things as, I, uh, as I'm clicking through here, you know, uh, Arista looking nice, that's a, a strong chart. So I'll actually start to, to go through here, Anthem, I like the setup there, not too extended. So I'll actually jump back over, check Anthem. 
So this is kind of how I'll like to, uh, how I like to work out of Chartbook. I'll actually keep those two views open uh, and, uh, and sort of check things off on the edit page as I go. Now, let's say I've checked off a whole bunch of stuff. We'll actually just check off a couple of more here so that that, uh, that next list has some more things in it. Once I've checked off a whole bunch of things on this edit view, imagine that I've gone through this whole tier one watch list and I wanna take all the things that I've checked, all the things that are, are really, really interesting, the setups are strong, uh, the timing of the charts and everything is looking really good. Let's say I wanted to move those over to my stocking list. Well, once I've checked everything here on the edit page, I've got a couple of different options down at the bottom. Uh, this row of buttons at the bottom of the screen is actually gonna light up as soon as you check something. And you've got a couple of different options. You can copy these charts to another list, you can move them to another list, or you can merge them into another list. When you merge them into another list, if they already exist, they won't get overwritten, but if they're not in that other list, they will get moved in there as well, copied in there. Uh, so personally, I like to use merge. That's, uh, that's the one that makes the most sense to me, and it's nice because things don't kind of step on each other. But let's say I wanted to merge these now into my stocking list. So again, think of what we've done. We've gone through our tier one watch list, which is just kind of that dump bucket. We're going through all those charts. We're checking off the ones that are setting up really nicely, the ones that we want to keep a much closer eye on, maybe things that we expect uh, might develop into a new trade target. So we're going to actually merge those into our tier two list. So now if I jump over to that tier two list, you might remember from earlier in the show, this actually had nothing in it. Here we go. Now we've got eight things that we actually merged in here. And if we jump back over to Chartbook, we can jump over to that tier two list. And there we go. Now we can do the same process. We can actually start to review these charts. And as you see, when you merge things in, you've saved those annotations to the chart. You're now merging them into another list. So those annotations actually follow you. This is a really nice feature of this kind of multi-tier uh, watch list approach because you can actually keep those annotations on uh, different charts in that tier one watch list. And then you can move them over to that stocking list and down into that buying list and those annotations are gonna follow you over. The same goes for comments. So a really nice feature actually having that work follow you around as you move these charts from list to list. So here we are now, we're in our tier two stocking list. This is, uh, you know, again, the uh, the things that we're, we think are setting up nicely, things that might develop into a potential trade target. So we can do the exact same process. We can keep an eye on everything here. And then uh, as we are ready to actually move something over to the buying list, uh, we can do the exact same thing. So let's say that ADP chart actually stands out and we think, you know, that's a, that's a really, really nice setup here. We wanna actually move that onto the buying list. Well, it's easy to do. All we've gotta do is come back to that edit page move that onto our buying list. And now if we jump over to our buying list, you can see that we've got one chart in here, just ADP. And again, those annotations followed us. In this case, we've actually moved this chart twice and the annotations still came along for the ride. So this is my approach. Now we're, we're doing a very, very condensed rapid version of it. Uh, generally things aren't going from that tier one watch list to the buying list in a couple of clicks in a couple of minutes. Um, but this is a process that I use that evolves over time. So these lists for me are, uh, are constantly full. Uh, there's always something in each of them. In this case, I've kind of cleared them out temporarily so that we could do this uh, fun little demo today. Uh, but generally, I've always got that tier one watch list full of stuff. I'm always reviewing it. Those are just kind of the, uh, you know, the flip through charts. And actually, in my case, I look at that, uh, at that list on my iPad quite a lot because it allows me to kind of you know, plop down on the couch and just flip through that tier one watch list, add my annotations and keep a, keep a, you know, an eye on uh, the things that are setting up nicely. Keep some notes on the side, all of that stuff. Uh, but I've always got something in my stocking list as well. Those are the, uh, the trade targets that I think are really, really setting up nicely. Things that are, are at, um, you know, somewhere close to a buy point, you know, maybe they're, uh, maybe they're breaking out, maybe they're coming back down to, uh, to retest a breakout, uh, or they've just bounced off of a retest. Um, you know, whatever it is, I've always got something in that stocking list as well. And then having a very specific list of the things that I'm actually actively looking at buying, that is another, another big, uh, big part of the, uh, the routine in my approach. So having these three tiers of your, uh, your watch lists, your uh, tier one watch list, your stocking list, and then your buying list, a uh, little, uh, little part of my toolkit there that hopefully you've gotten some value out of uh, seeing how this works and seeing how easy it is to move things around from list to list. So 
that is our show for today. A little bit of process discussion, a little bit of, uh, of routine discussion, talking about uh, how I actually use chart lists and this kind of three-tiered watch list approach to keep an eye on the things that I am actively interested in buying. Again, the fact that the annotations stick around there is a big, big feature. So remember that from 10 per page and from chart book view in, uh, in sharp charts, you can add those annotations. You can do that from the sharp charts workbench, of course, and save those charts. You can also do that from some of these chart list views. And when you open up those two tabs, I like to have chart book open in my case uh, in, uh, in one tab and then have that edit view open in another tab. Really easy to flip back and forth between those two, sort of check things off as you're moving stuff from one list to another. Uh, nice, easy way to work with uh, with those two tabs open. But remember those annotations, remember those commenting tools as well, keeping notes right there in your lists, and those are gonna follow you around as you move things from one list to another. Some really powerful features there. Now, we don't have time to jump over to ACP and highlight all of these features over there, but the same concept applies. So. For all you ACP users, I know we're working out of sharp charts today, but the same concepts apply. Over in ACP, I've got the same uh, same list. I've got my tier one watch list. I've got my uh, my tier two stocking list, and I've got my buying list over there as well. And for all you sharp charts users that are interested in exploring ACP, of course, you do have built in out of the box in the platform. No work that you need to do. All of your sharp charts lists are actually over there in ACP as well. So that's a nice, easy way to access some of those ACP features. We highlighted that recently on the show a couple of weeks ago. So maybe go back and check out that episode, but um, lots of different ways to take advantage of the uh, things we're doing over in ACP as well. But for all of you in our ACP community, who are saying, hey, we didn't take a look at this today in ACP, just know that all these same concepts apply there. Down in the drawer at the bottom of ACP, you have these exact same features, the move, the copy, the merge, all that stuff. So the same concepts apply. You can create these lists. You can move those charts from one list to another, and it's going to work the exact same as what we were taking a look at today. Same concept applies to having that uh, tier one watch list over an ACP be the first one in your list makes it really easy to save symbols into that kind of dump bucket. Uh, dump bucket, not the most sophisticated word that I could uh, could choose there, but um, you know it, that's that really is what it is. It, uh, it is a dump bucket for stocks and ETFs, things that I'm finding as I'm going through the markets, whenever someone says, hey, this chart's setting up really nicely, I'll just kind of dump it into that tier one watch list. It becomes a really nice place to go back to, easy place to go and kind of work out of. Uh, and I can always move those charts from that list out into uh, to other lists, other stocking lists and, uh, and down into the buying list as well. So hopefully all that has come through today. I wanna thank you for joining me on today's episode. Always fun when we get to highlight a little bit of my process, kind of reach into my own personal toolkit and share with you some of the ways that I use stock charts in my own approach to the markets. I wanna thank you though for joining me. As always, remember, we do this show every Friday, really just uh, devoted to helping you get more value out of stock charts, seeing different corners of the site, seeing different corners of the platform, helping you uh, think about things in a new way. For instance, thinking about chart list in a new way, maybe some of these features you've, uh, you've seen before but haven't thought about this way. So. That is our mission here every Friday on Stock Charts and Focus, helping you get more value out of stock charts. So 5 p.m. Eastern time on Stock Charts TV every Friday. Also up on our YouTube channel after that and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. Lots of different ways to watch. Remember, before I let you go, holiday special, stockcharts.com slash special. That is the place to go and get all the details Take advantage of the special. You can sign up. You can extend your existing account. You can sign up for a new account. Take advantage of that special offer up to two free months. And there's only a couple more days to take advantage of it. It's going away at the end of the month. And when it's gone, it is gone. Not coming back until next December. So definitely take advantage of that holiday special while you still can. Stockcharts.com slash special. Keep an eye out for a couple of emails too. We'll be sending out some, uh, some reminder emails uh, as we get a little closer to the end of the month. And of course, the banners up on the website, you can always look for those as well. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockTrust.com. So good to be with you. I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season, a happy, happy new year to uh, to all of you. Thank you so much for being a part of Stock Charts. We have had a blast this year in 2021, building so many different features, uh, bringing you so much content on StockTrust TV, so many different things that you have allowed us to do 
We are passionate about our work because you guys are here making it all happen, giving us the opportunity to help build uh, charting tools and visualizations and bring content to the channel, all of that good stuff. So it's only possible because of you. So I want to thank all of you this holiday season. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful holiday, a wonderful new year. Stay, uh, stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, spend some time with family, all that good stuff. I'll see you again, though, next Friday for another episode of the show. And until then, chart on, my friends. Hey, guys. Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.